All right, welcome to another edition of Between the Lines, fueled by Gatorade. Gabe Henderson here alongside Ben Lieber. Ben, uh, the Vikings lose 34-26. to It was a game of back and forth. 20, 32 points scored in the third quarter combined, but ultimately the Vikings didn't score in the fourth quarter, which ultimately led to a loss. Yeah, I just think that, um, you know, our team got worn down. Mm -hmm. You know, I think defensively, the, the power of their running game, getting guys out on the edges with all those pullers, all that window dressing, it wears you down mentally. Mm -hmm. I, I, do, I do know that. But then you throw in the physicality of it, it makes it for a really long game. Now, offensively, you know, same sort of thing. We knew that they had a powerful front four. For the most part, we did a decent job. But mm -hmm. I know everybody wants to talk about Bosa and, and Armstead, but DJ Jones – Number oh, 93, man. their nose tackle, to me, was the biggest difference maker because we could not get the run game going. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times we would have a double team on him. He would fight off the initial double team, the initial impact, still keep his feet and, and make a play on the running back. Yeah. We could not. If you can't take care of one guy with two guys, you're going to have a problem. So um, I just think ultimately at the end of the game, that's the reason why Kirk had so many overthrows, couldn't yeah. step in, yeah. couldn't step into the pocket because of all that pressure. Yeah, speaking of that pressure, I mean, like you said, it affected Kirk. Not, not one of his best games. Um, Definitely, I mean, I can just think of the two-point conversion uh, early in the game. He underthrew J.J. on a mm -hmm. on a route. It, it was one of those games where you look at – when Kirk looks back on the film, he's going to say, man, I left a lot on that field today. Yeah, and I think – and I'm just going to take a guess here, just watching his body language a little bit. He knew going into this game he's going to have to get the ball out quick. Yeah. So – we know how accurate Kirk is when he feels internally where he's comfortable and he has time. I think as his game went on, as he took a bunch of shots, I think he started to speed up that process. Mm -hmm. And when you start to speed up that process, along with the fact that you don't feel comfortable stepping into your throws, that's why you're going to get a lot of passes that sail on you and go high. Don't get hit by the cart. Yeah, don't get hit by the cart. <laughs> Maybe I wish they would have been out there on the field today, too. Maybe they would have stopped the outside zone. Field awareness, <laughs> even in the tunnel. Field awareness, even in the tunnel. But even in the tunnel, these guys are back here right now, and, you know, we're all about to get on the plane. And you, you still sense that there's still some confidence in this team going forward. You got a chance to go 6-6 six and six next week against the Detroit Lions, but there's going to be an opportunity to do that with – Alexander Madison as the running back. Yeah, that's the thing. And we, and we saw Kene Wongu get some carries as a running back. And I hope that, that we can build off that because mm -hmm. I think that he is a special type player. He can make guys miss. And he definitely has the speed for some big plays. So we'll see how much we implement him as the second running back. Look, this, this is a team that has battled back and forth. We knew that this stretch of games was going to be the toughest for this team. And I don't want these guys to, to take their foot off the gas by any yeah. means thinking, oh, well, the toughest part of the schedule is over. Now we can just kind of cruise through these next few games and rack up some wins. They still need to go out there. They still need to try to control their destiny, get themselves into the playoffs. And, again, that starts on the road against, I think, a still a very tough physical Detroit Lions team. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I am was about to pass block real quick, but. They kind of moved out the way. But long story short, we're at this point in, in the season where every game means so much. And the fact that, you know, we do play a Lions team that still hasn't won a game, but they're looking at this Vikings team like they did last time. was like, hey, this is a Vikings team that's beatable. Yeah. So if you are the Vikings and you're going into this game without your probably your starting four defensive linemen that you started the season out with and your backup running back, how do you continue to find success both in the air and on the ground as an offense? Well, you know, defense. I'm not. I'm not worried about offen offensively. Okay. You know, okay. I, I just feel like we ha we know what we need to do. I think that we we do have the guys. I would not be surprised if there is some sort of change at the offensive line. We'll see if that that happens. But I feel comfortable with the play calling. I thought Clint did a great job, especially yeah. early in this game. Uh, it, it looked like the Arizona Cardinals approach, and then we kind of shifted more into the boot game, and it really kept them off balance. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously not having Dalvin out there is going to be an issue, but I do have trust that, that at least our running backs can beat a Detroit Lions team. Now, defensively, that's the issue with me. You know, we yeah. have not stopped the run, even with our guys that were healthy in there. And so now we have a bunch of backups in there that are playing hard, but they're backups for a reason. Yeah. And, and to me, we're going to have to – get creative, you know, maybe create some five-man surfaces on some obvious rundowns to, to try to disrupt the Detroit Lions and put them in third and long situations. Well, this is a game where we'll 
where any given Sunday, any team can win and the Vikings are still in the hunt. I don't think Vikings fans should lose, lose hope. We are still in this thing, only one game away from 500. I know it's easier said than done to get back on the right path, but the Vikings, I feel like they have the team to do it, and I'm hoping they do have the team to do it. But going forward, it starts with winning one game at a time, and that's the Detroit Lions next Sunday. This is Between the Lines, fueled by Gatorade. My name's Gabe Henderson alongside Ben Lieber.